Good morning. It's the 15th of December, Tuesday, um, 2020. 2020 quickly coming to an end. Um, and uh, what we're looking at here, today's my daughter's birthday, as a matter of fact. And, um, man, she's not a little kid. <laughs> so I feel old, you know. Um, but that's all right. Somebody got 13 minutes. The Cuban Missile Crisis, 1962. The whole reason... Um, got this here. Somebody got me this for a gift. Somebody did something extremely nice for, for me. I would not have bought this um, my own self. I don't know why. Eh, you know, it's somebody that really knew me. Somebody that bought this for, 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 for me and um, knew I would appreciate it, and I do. Um, it's been out a couple years. I know it's based on, you know, 13 days, which was, I liked 13 days. And uh, I, I did like 13 Days, and I liked um, Fort Sumter by, uh, you know, it's a lot like that same system, right? Um, Mark Herman's Fort Sumter, uh, 13 Days, I forgot who the designer, but it's done by Jolly Roger Games, so. And it's here, too, done by Jolly Roger, and this is 13 Minutes. Let's look at it. The world was never closer to global nuclear war than during the Cuban Missile Crisis in October of 1962. Nuclear missiles <laughs> launched from, uh, from, from Cuba would reach Washington in 13 minutes. Can you navigate the world of superpower brinksmanship without triggering World War III? Inspired by the acclaimed game, 13 days, 13 minutes lets two players refight the crisis in a tense guard game in 13 minutes. All right, 13 minute game. That's a quick game. Uh, I was laughing because of, you know, nuclear. <laughs> that's the way we pronounce it, you know. And I, I know people made fun of George W. Bush and uh, Jimmy Carter, incidentally, both of them, uh, because we pronounce it nuclear. But um, I understand it's nuclear. But uh, that's just, you know, who we are. I mean, um, you know, uh, by trade, I'm a, by education, I'm a linguist. So uh, I also understand that everybody else has their own idiosyncrasies too. So I don't shy away from accents. Uh, I think accents are important. So, <laughs> but that's why I'm laughing. Um, thinking about somebody out there thinking, well, it's, it's not nuclear. You know, but all right. Nice little box. It's almost. That's. It's, it's, I, I do get obsessed with boxes. I do like boxes. This is almost. Um, feels coated or something, right? Good box. Nice box. Okay. Here's. What's this? The rule book. Oh boy. That's the rule book. All right. We'll look at that in a minute. No dice in this game, obviously. It's just. Um, it's more like a. A Wuro, a little bit of a little bit of war game, a little bit of Euro game, setting up the game, how to play the game, bid for initiative, okay. Play and draw a strategy card, all right. All right, draw. Play and draw a strategy card, okay. When you play a card, it instantly turns into a battleground, okay. Place it face up, all right. You play the card and you command. All right. Event only available on your own neutral cards, right? Draw a strategy card and end of the game. Battleground prestige. Wow, it just seems a campaign game. What is the camp? Well, let's let's read that. Play a single game to find a winner, or keep a tally of the score until one player reaches thirteen prestige. If you trigger nuclear war, you lose the full campaign game immediately. Campaign game immediately, regardless of the score. Okay, yeah, all right. Well, for a little small rule book, there's a. Kennedy and Khrushchev there, I guess. My father always, don't get me wrong, I think my father liked Kennedy. My father always complained about Kennedy because he's not wearing hats and walking around bareheaded and 
everybody thinking that was a good style <laughs> and you know hats never were popular after that according to him right got cubes red and blue and an insert which is fine and cards let's open the cards and look at them wow i like the this is an inexpensive game you can find it on Amazon for like 10 bucks, right? But I do like the production quality they put in and the packaging of it. And oh, the cards are, eh, they're normal cards. They ain't ultra thick or anything. They're normal cards, though. So, what do we got? Some of these, these are some of the United States cards. What is that one? All right, three cubes. Place up to two. Oh, influence, okay. XCOM, wave and smile, U2 photographs, buy photographs, course, quarantine, oh, I've heard that word too much this year already, public protests, whoops, strategic balance, all right. Moscow's in the brain. MRBMs and RBMs, right? U2 down, right? That's the... During the missile crisis, was that the only casualty was a U2 pilot? Believe it or not, there was a good casualty or two. Had to do with a, a pilot, I do believe. Ah, I forget, I forget now. Getting old, Fidel. Fidel Castro. It's the Patria Comunista de Cuba. All right. Containment. Yeah. To the brink. Wow. And you can look at this. Ha. Huh. The only thing I guess I don't like is that there's not a lot of history on the cars. I, I thought the same thing about. Fort Sumter, but Fort Sumter and 13 Days, if I'm not mistaken, but Fort Sumter and 13 Days both, I think, did a better job on the book. So there it is. It's a little inexpensive game somebody gifted me, and I was tickled to get it. 13 minutes. Plays in 13 minutes. Play the Cold War in 13 minutes. Um, Yeah, so pick it up if you don't have it. It's super inexpensive, and like I said, um, I don't know how thematic it is. I don't know how much it follows the, uh, how much of the feel you're going to get of the Cold War. Like, uh, I think you actually got some of that feel in 13 days. We know Twilight Struggle, you just, it gives you a good Cold War type of thing, uh, type of feeling when you're playing that, which is amazing. But, uh, yeah, so pick it up. All right, y'all. Talk to y'all soon. Y'all have a great one. Um, uh, Gosh, got a bunch of task force games I probably need to get to and do some unboxings. And, uh, but, all right now, y'all. Have a good one. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.